Okay, hi. Um, I'm gonna start off my sessions with a very short, very easy peasy music lesson. It's not rocket science, so don't worry. So in music, a song usually have a set of chords and the chords have three notes. One of the most basic chords is C major. The root notes is C. The third and fifth intervals of the root notes is E and G. When we play all these three notes together, we create a harmonic sound of the C major chord. This is called harmony. Harmony or harmonizing is a vital component in making a song because it blends every element from vocals to instruments. In music, there has to be a harmony of everything to make the song complete. In my own perspective, music and human are pretty much the same as inner harmony is the key for personal fulfillment. So how can we build inner harmony? It starts with reflections and acceptance of yourself by embracing your highs and lows, by being aware of who you are and what you have, you will have all the elements that you need to create your own symphony on the life triple clef. As humans, uh, our personalities are shaped by various experiences and emotions, both positive and negative aspects. Embracing different sides of ourselves require awareness, recognition, and practice. To much of our perceptions, there are two sides of each personality traits. And now I will use my examples to thoroughly explain to you. So the first example is when people talk about me, they call me a bundle of nerds because I worry about everything. I tend to excessively worry and imagine the worst case scenarios in my head. And I've experienced anxiety throughout my life, especially those important moments. That's why I often rush to quick solution just to feel better right away. Just to feel like I have that problem off my plate. Despite my efforts, I found myself making poor decision, which worsened my anxiety even more because, you know, it's like you're trying to solve an equation, but you're getting the wrong answer every time, despite following the correct method. So I start to reassess my approach and realize that I have let anxiety take control of my decision-making process. So what can I do with this information? I ask myself, how can I reduce anxiety and make better decisions? The answer is by being well-prepared and extra cautious. So now, whenever I have to decide something, I will give myself some time to go over the options to analyze the situations and to gather the information that I need. And I will make as many backup plans as possible. So you see, I transform from anxiety to my to a strength, caution. Caut being cautious mean being well prepared, having plans for things that you can con you can control. And anything that I cannot control, I will let it go. The next example is, well, you probably all know that everyone, everyone has a dark side and I'm no exception. Back in school, I usually felt jealous when my friends achieved something that I wanted. You know, when they got top of the class or they had an award, being good was never enough for me. I had to be the best. And this kind of mindset slowly leads me to my self-doubt and eventually depression. And it took a, me a lot of time to realize how harmful it is. So I started to ask myself some uncomfortable questions like, am I afraid of accepting that I might be less than my friends? And yes, that was my fear. So what can I do with this information? And I know admitting my envy was hard because nobody wants to feel like you're the jealous type, but I accept it so I can manage it. I want to have a healthier outlook on others' people's achievement 
and I want to deal with this emotion better. So I've learned that jealousy is a very, very common, very natural feelings, especially when you are insecure. Everyone has it. So the key is to accept it and manage it. And now when I look at people's achievement, I look at them as goals to reach. And while I work hard for my dreams, I have also understand that effort doesn't always guarantee success. That's a painful lesson, but that's okay. Because not everything in life, not everything you want in life is meant for you. So I shifted from jealousy to healthy competitiveness, understanding that everyone's journey is unique. So like I said, every personality traits has a dual nature. There are two sides of the personality traits. We usually perceive our strengths and weaknesses separately, but they are actually two sides of a coin. Weaknesses can transform into strengths if we know how to activate and operate them correctly. And by reflecting and accepting my flaw, I'm able to transform my weakness into the strengths. And you know what? My biggest weakness is being emotional. Growing up, I was born with this big bottle of emotions. I learned to bury them to avoid being seen through. Mm -hmm. And this suppression became a habit, making it hard for me to accept my emotional side. I was struggling a lot to manage my feelings, to understand them. So I often acted impulsively and felt frustrated afterwards. I, I felt like I hated myself for having those emotions. And it was a whole journey of, you know, working with myself, asking myself a bunch of questions to unravel these feelings. And I've learned that all of our emotions, even the difficult ones, are beautiful because it represents the most human aspect of us. So I learned that all my Weakness can transform into strength. And I know it's tough. It's tough to accept your full range of uh, the full range of your emotions. Um, and especially the ugly ones. You know, no one wants to feel like, you know, you have those ugly feelings. We want to feel like we are good people. But I'm telling you, that's okay. That's okay to have those ugly feelings because the key is to accept them and manage them not to avoid or deny them. So I've learned that my emotional nature can transform into compassion and that is my power. And with that compassion, I'm able to sympathize and understand people around me. With that compassion, I'm able to write songs that speak my feelings and resonate with people and allowing people to feel heard and understood. Writing songs help me connect with my emotions. During one of the darkest period of my life, I wrote as you guys all know. I was completely lost and overwhelmed by the adulthood. And that question, is there a place for me in this world? Keep like, it's bearing in my head. And like, it's, it's scary, you know, it's scary to feel like that. And the song, has become my sanctuary, reminding me that I am enough and giving me hope of finding where I belong eventually. Or one of you guys' favorite, 某种的joy, is about the true meaning of love. You know, in our social media-driven world nowadays, you easily catch yourself wanting the things that people seem to have when you look at all of these idealized relationships online because it's polished, because it's perfect. And you can help but feeling a pang of envy, and wanting that for yourself. But for me, love is actually very simple. It's the feeling that you know that person will always be there for you through ups and downs. That person will always look at you like you carry magic inside your body. And this kind of love fill your hearts and also help you to grow and embrace yourself with acceptance and kindness. Or my latest single, Zhongding, is about me not being the most 
confident person despite being an artist. I'm shaking over here, FYI. So, um, but because I struggle a lot with insecurities and the idea of putting myself out there for the world to see is terrifying. And it means that I'm putting myself in a very vulnerable position for criticism and judgment. And this song embodies my hope of finding the courage to shine and inspiring others to do the same. By introspectively looking at myself, I'm able to grow as a person and, and as an artist. And I understand where my feelings come from. I learn to manage them and control them and even use them as my inspiration for my music. So that's just my journey of, you know, how music connect with my emotions. Now I'm going to move on to a more technical part. You are probably wondering how, so how can we self-reflect? How can we self-accept? I know you guys are kind of familiar with the concepts, but put it into practice can feel like, you know, solving a puzzle. To start your journey of self-reflection and acceptance, you need to train yourself into two things self-awareness and emotional journalization which mean writing your emotions down self-awareness means affirming and re recognizing your emotions expressions and behaviors we often know how we feel inside but there are times when we fail to confirm those emotions so you can practice self-awareness by consistently identifying how you feel during daily situations like try to admit it out loud so today i'm sad i'm frustrated i'm happy i'm disappointed and with that self-awareness you can start write your emotions down so you gain a, a better insights into your behaviors because you're gonna act most likely upon how you feel Focus on your emotions rather than the events. And this practice not only helps you to understand your behaviors and your emotional patterns, but also enhances your memory and foster analytical thinking in all aspects of life. So that is the two prior steps to do. So now, how can we reflect? Firstly, pay attention to how you feel and what you do in daily situation. Make a note of anything you see that happened repeatedly. Either the repetition is significant or minor. Then you're gonna verify, you're gonna identify your negative traits which hinder your progress in professional environment and uh, relationships, both in career and personal life. After that, you're going to verify that negative traits through past events, feedback from close ones, and personal observation. Try to evaluate them objectively and subjectively. Stick to the fact. Avoid denying or obscuring them. I know some, some of us feel like we have to be harsh on ourselves in order to improve, and I used to be that person. But I'm telling you, this approach can foster self-doubt and anxiety. And I've learned that the healthiest motivations comes from the desire of seeking positive growth. So that's how we reflect. So how can we accept? Once you identify your negative traits, either change them or integrate the positive traits with the negative ones to create a better results. For example, laziness can transform into sufficiency if you know how to integrate the good personality traits of being responsible and being resourceful. Or recklessness, we can foster recklessness instead, we can foster bravery instead of recklessness if you know how to integrate the good personality traits of thinking twice before you do anything and taking preventive measures. And the ultimate key point is be comfortable with both your good traits and bad traits. Accept them as parts of yourself. 
Don't hate or love them because essentially acceptance means being at peace with yourself and being at friend, being friends with yourself. And I know feedback is important, but you should only change when it's beneficial for you, when it's necessary, necessary for you, not when others tell you to. So you see, self-reflection and acceptance do not mean antagonizing yourself and do nothing about it. Instead, it advocates for admitting your flaws and doing something about it. It advocates for, for your best, best self, not be yourself. And only by only accepting, you can unlock your full potential for care for development and the, the ability to transform your weaknesses into strengths. The main goals of our reflection and acceptance is not merely to help to achieve your goals, but to provide you the leverage, the clarity, the stability, and the strength and mindset for your upcoming endeavors. Throughout the journeys, you won't feel lost, lost, drained, or out of control. That's when you achieve a sense of inner harmony. So, so. I pick out, I purposefully pick out my my big three personality traits, traits and and songs to represent the three notes in a chord. And that is how I'm creating my symphony on love treble tref. And I would love to love yours. Thank you.